Hi, welcome to some projects to, with, uh, with Gourmet Quilter. I'm Susan Clare, the Gourmet Quilter. Um, we're going to be doing some projects over the next little while, uh, 20 different projects in fact, one each time, for uh, things made using two and a half inch strips. So often we've got this whole wealth of leftover two and a half inch strips, sometimes we have a whole new packet of two and a half inch strips. And everything is quite exciting with two and a half inch strips. So some of these projects that I'm going to be doing are going to be just small, just using up small pieces, some will be bigger. Today we're doing a small project. So this is the first project in, as I said, the series of 20. There's uh, information on my website, gourmetquarter.com, where you can sign up to receive the pattern if you're interested. What we're doing today is a small needle roll, or a roll up, as I've called it. Um, and I'm keeping my sewing machine needles in the little pockets that I've created there. And it just rolls up, it's kind of cute, um, and keeps all my little needle packets all together. Because I do have a few different types of needles. I have quilting needles and I have some, um, um, I'll tell you in a minute, metallic type needles. And I have some jeans needles and I have... Um, I know I'd do some ballpoint needles for certain things. So we do use different needles for different things and it just seemed to me somewhere <clears throat> somewhere that we can keep everything in one place. So it all fits nicely with two and a half inch strips. On the pattern it tells you what we're going to cut and how to go about things. So I'm just here to show you. So I've gone ahead and I've cut all my strips um, to the lengths that I need. So the little pockets, I'm making different colours this time. The little pockets are two and a half inch strips cut and then folded. And then just a little line of top stitching um, about a quarter of an inch down from the fold on each pocket. So I've actually done some of them, but I'll go ahead and do this one, then I've done all of them. So just a quarter of an inch away, just a little straight stitch is all we need on that. And then we just need to set them out onto their backgrounds. Now these ones I kind of colour match the fabrics. I'm not doing that this time so much, but I've got all the same fabric. So sometimes we've got more of one fabric than another and we just need to lay our pockets onto the background strips that we've got there and so really nothing terribly hard about this but it is a fun little project and it may not be machine needles you might want to keep something way more exciting interesting or otherwise in those little pockets so we just need to lay them on and then we've got to join them all together into a row so really that's a simple uh, quarter inch seam again seaming them and then pressing those seams open and so that we've got a little row and the end one doesn't have a pocket because that's going to have the closure um, fixing on there so we, but we need it there to be able to do that so I'm going to just join these together again as I said just a quarter inch seam just make sure that your pockets are lining up and things like that um, so it's just a matter of stitching So stitching them into a row and then pressing, uh, I've found that because of the bulk of the little pockets I found it was better to press those seams open. So I'll go ahead and I'll join my row up, press my seams open and I'll come back and show you the next stage. So I've gone ahead and I've stitched my little row together, I've pressed my seams open, it's all looking pretty good, we have pockets except they haven't got a bottom in them just yet so not much good to us yet. So then for the, for the back, for the outside, I've just joined two strips together. So I've already gone ahead and I've done that and I've just pressed the seam one way on that. Uh, and then, then we need to place that with the batting. And now I have got a batting that has got a light fusing on it, so I'm actually just going to fuse it. You don't need a fusible batting, but I do suggest a fairly thin batting. Uh, maybe a cotton batting works quite nicely. And then we just need to put on before we, before we join it all up, we need to put an outside piece of fastening on. So um, the pattern again tells you all the measurements and all these sorts of things for this. So I'm just going to get this ready and stitch this on. So you need to just decide which is your top and, and bottom so that you know which end you're measuring from more than anything else. So I'm just going to come in and measure for where that... So this sits right over the join line and I'm probably not going to pin it because it's not going to stay there very well um, so I'm just going to go to the sewing machine now and just stitch that on and 
and through the batting as well so that it's nice and firm on there. So we have to do this before because otherwise we'd be stitching through our pockets. So that's nicely in place now and now we need to pop this piece with our pockets right sides together because we're going to sew it all together and then turn it out. So we, do so we need to put this right sides together with that but to, to enable us to do that it will be easier if we've trimmed our batting to the right size and yes we could have cut one exactly the right size but I just feel that because we've got to sew on the fastening and things, things just move a little bit with batting and it's kind of easier when it's all held together by something before we trim off any bits of batting but it will help us if the edges are all level when we're doing the next part of the sewing so I'll just get rid of those and I'm, so I'm going to pop those right sides together but I'm just going to trim that now so in the pattern there was a page that had a shape in it so I've cut that out so that I can cut these, this end to be the shape that we want it to be so that we can stitch it. So I'm just going to place that on there and then with my ruler I'm just going to cut those little corners off and then everything's going to be quite ready for us to just stitch it. So now we've got our shapes, they're sitting together nicely there, well, they will be very shortly and if you want to pin them together you can otherwise we just need to sew them around but but we need to leave ourselves a gap to turn so maybe two or three inches along the top edge where there's no pocket because the pocket makes it quite a bit harder to try and turn edges in because of the bulk so I'm going to go ahead and just stitch all the way around and then I'll come back and show you what to do next so I've gone ahead and stitched you can see on through the batting all the way around but I've left myself a gap there now we need to turn it out the right way through that gap but because we've got some little corners to push out, I'm just going to trim off close to the stitching. Don't, don't cut the stitching on these corners. So after I've clipped my corners, I can turn it out through that little gap that I left. So much fun making these sorts of little things using up little bits and pieces, making something useful, or just having fun. Then we've just got to push those corners out as best we can. Sometimes um, a little turning tool is quite helpful. Sometimes it's something I use like a pencil without too sharp a point on it, just to push the corners out as best we can. Um, sometimes you can use a little pin to help you pull them out as well. And then we can press all this, and when we press it, um, we need to make sure that we turn in the edge where we've turned it through so that we can have that um, nice and um, straight as well. So I always find it really helpful to just run the tool that I'm using around the edge as well. It's looking pretty good. I just need to feel I need to push this one. Where the pocket is, it's a little bit thicker, so it's probably just going to be a little bit harder to push out in the corner there. But I think that's going to be okay. So we're just going to press all these edges now. So we just want to make sure that they're sitting nice and as straight as we can get them. And it's all looking pretty good so far. And up this end as well. And then along this top edge where we left our gap, we just want to turn that in. So as if we've done our quarter inch seam allowance. So it should end up being a pretty straight line. Sometimes you just have to fiddle a little bit because the fabric has a little mind of its own. So unreasonable. And I think it's looking pretty good though. It's going to just sit there quite nicely. So that when we stitch around, we're going to top stitch very shortly. And when we do the top stitching, that will just take in that and you won't even know that it was turned out through there. So 
that's all looking pretty good that's looking pretty good so now I'm just going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch in all the way around so fairly close to the edge but that then will enable that gap to be closed at the same time um, and as you, you can hand stitch it closed if you want to but I always like to do the top stitching anyway and that takes all that into account so I'm going to go ahead I'll do the top stitching all the way around and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do next so I've gone ahead, I've done my top stitching all the way around, it's looking pretty good. The only thing now is, you don't have to do this bit, but I quite like to, is just do a stitching pretty much in the ditch, just to hold all that together. Now that possibly will mean that when you're doing one of the rows, you'll go through um, your hook stuff on the back, but it doesn't matter, you can just stitch straight through that. In fact, if I do that one now, you will see exactly what I mean. I just feel it's a good idea to hold it all together because of the pockets. So I'm just going in the ditch, straight down the middle there. So yes, I did go through my um, hook there, but I, it's not a problem. So I'll go ahead and I'll do my other rows of that um, and then come back and show you the last bit. So I've gone ahead, I've done my stitching through so that my pockets are nice and secure now. I've got that on the back, I've got, and I've stitched this one on the front, the uh, the loop one. So we've got the hook on the back, the loop on the front, and the reason I've done it that way around is so that when you're working with this, this is not catching on everything. I find that this hook wants to catch on my clothes, it wants to catch on all sorts of things that I'd rather it didn't catch on. So that's it made, so I can put my packets of needles in there, and of course there's room for more than one packet if you need more than one of the same one in there. You could make it longer if you wanted to. If you make it longer, you'll just have to watch where you put the other piece of the fastening on the back. And then it'll just be a little roll up for you. And how cute is that to keep all your little needles in? So I'm pretty pleased with that. That's my little uh, machine needle roll up with two and a half inch strips, thank you. And I will see you again with the next project.